Love this little wallet. It's not the one you're thinking of. That one is ridiculously expensive. No, this is just a cheap little knockoff. I'm not paying $100 for a piece of metal when I could got it for like 30, which is what I did. So if you're anything like me, you enjoy a good piece of gear. And what's not to love? It's so much fun looking at the endless content of unboxing and gear reviews, trying to justify us to spend the amount of money on a product that we probably don't really need. But it's fun to look at all the specs of the items that we wanna purchase. And a good piece of gear can really help us streamline our process. If you're working with a client, then it's important that the piece of gear works right the first time. And I wanna talk about this a little bit more, but looking over the clock, I'm actually gonna be late for worship practice, so I'm gonna to need to take you with me. Where'd I go? Oh, what's this? Gotta start your day off right, you know what I'm saying? You don't have caffeine and cold things before uh, practicing vocals, it's not good. All right, here it is, the humble abode. All right, and then we go. That's a little bit better, eh? So this is it, this is my church. Uh, let me guys know, comment down below. Your church bigger than mine? Just wanted to know. I think we're a pretty small church, but you know what? Up here in Canada, there's not really a whole lot of big churches, so I'm sure if you guys watch it from like America or elsewhere, you guys have bigger churches than this. But you know, it's not, it's not a huge church. It's pretty small. I just walked the whole length of it, so you know. You can sort of see, let me get up on stage here. So everything here in this church, these chairs, that board in the back, that box in the back, that's our, that's our sound box. That's our soundboard. I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit. We got that for free. We got our chairs for free. We got our in-ears for free. And we actually also got Wi-Fi in this church for free. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about how you too can also get that for free. But um, there's too much hype around this type of gear. I'm gonna explain it to you really quickly. But first, let me tell you why we need an upgrade. Okay, now just to kind of give you a bit of a perspective of what we start off with. This is the soundboard, sound box, sound, sound system. This is the sound system that we first had when I first came to this church. And you know, it's a Yamaha, it works. It's got EQs, it's got phantom power, it's got eight different mic inputs, and the last two can be stereo, but the problem with this is that even though it has eight mic inputs, it really only has about mm, five or so, because the last few were broken. So, we only had about five channels, but when you have to plug in a computer, and a pastor, you only have about three or so channels for the rest of the band to be plugged into. Which meant that if you had two or three vocalists and a guitar, you were running and pushing the limit of what the system could do. The other problem with this board is it only has a gain knob to turn up the channels. Now, if you know anything about gain structure and audio, the gain knob isn't really designed to turn up the volume, it's designed to change the sensitivity of the microphone. So the higher we turn this gain knob, the more sensitive the microphone gets and the more prone to feedback which happened a lot considering we only had one floor wedge. So this system can only have one floor wedge at a time, or at least that's all we used it for. And when you have multiple musicians that are all trying to hear themselves, it's a lot harder to share one floor wedge together, especially when our volunteers, some of them have hearing impairments. So it's very difficult for us to share a monitor together, even though we're all doing it for the same reasons and we all love each other, we're all trying to make it work. It's very difficult for us to work off this sound system. And speaking of monitors, ugh, this was the monitor that we had up on stage for a while. This massive wedge. And that's part of the problem with this. This thing was huge. And in a small church with limited space on the stage, we couldn't really afford to lose this much real estate when we could have put a guitar amp or even another vocalist where this could sit. The other problem was, if one of our musicians wanted to be turned up louder, it wouldn't just be louder for them, it would be louder for the entire congregation. Because this would essentially be a third PA speaker, which would be bouncing back off the wall and back onto the audience creating a really weird delay effect and some very muddy low end and really not a very pleasant thing. So a lot of these things need to be fixed. And ultimately the solution was going digital. And why not? Digital sounds like a great solution. We'd be able to have enough channels on the board to accompany the musicians we had, as well as getting anyone new on it. We could actually have proper game structure on the board. So we wouldn't just be turning up the sensitivity of the microphones, but we'd be able to properly set the game structure per each channel. 
We could route the channels accordingly and have multiple monitors as well as possible in-ear solutions. As well as getting rid of those monitors means that we can get rid of those big bulky units up on stage. It sort of sounds like a win-win. Now it's just one problem. Digital soundboards are really expensive. See, for a small church like us, there was no way that we would have it in our budget to actually have a soundboard of that nature. That was reserved for bigger churches with larger budgets. They're the ones that could have the fancy sound boards, the nice in-ear monitors, and things that would be useful for the congregation and streamline the service. For us little guys, we just had to hope and pray and dream that maybe one day we also could have that type of technology. It's kind of hard lying down here. I'm gonna get back up. <laughs> and for a long time, that's all I had to do was just dream about the day that we'd be able to have a really nice sound system or in-ear monitors knowing that there'd be no way we'd be able to get it. That is until one day I found something. Well, actually, I didn't find it. One of our other worship leaders found it. And they were able to find a way that we could actually get all this equipment for free. And the way we'd be able to do it is through a government grant. Now, I know what you're gonna say, but hold on a second. Let me explain myself. Now, I'm not here to be controversial or anything. I'm not saying you should take advantage of your government. At the time, the Ontario government had a grant for senior citizens, specifically geared towards community centers and churches, that was supposed to help them experience it a little better. Things like padded seats, wheelchair accessibility, like ramps and elevators, even upgraded sound systems. So naturally, we wrote the government asking if we could get some money to help us upgrade. And to our surprise, the government actually said yes to most of the stuff we requested. So naturally, I was completely over the moon. And when the soundboard finally arrived and we got the old pews out, put in the new chairs, it was so exciting. I put together the soundboard, I routed all the signals, I did a frequency sweep of everything, and, and it sounded great. Now all I was left to do was actually have Sunday service. So naturally, I put myself on for the first service for two reasons. One, I wanted to make sure that if there were any problems with the sound system, that I could solve it. And two, well, I gotta play with new toy. And who doesn't want the opportunity of having the first use of the new toy? I mean, this was a soundies dream come true. And so that first Sunday, it was fantastic. I had so much fun. I did a proper frequency sweep for the pastor. He even has a cheek mic now because before he was using an SM57. And for some reason, pastors just don't like to hold that microphone properly. It's a dynamic microphone, which means you're supposed to hold it about two fingers width away from your mouth. But every pastor I've ever seen holds it all the way down to the belly button. And for some reason, that's just where the arm naturally wants to go, because I guess they get tired holding it up. But it is a nightmare trying to properly gain structure them so that they can be heard in the congregation without having them ring out in the room and cause feedback. Luckily, we didn't have any problems with that. For the band, I even used some compression, played with some reverb, and I was having so much fun on the system. Finally, the closing song happened and we had some background music, so I slowly faded it up. And as it came to an end, I faded it back down. And it was such a successful Sunday. And at the end of it, one of our older congregate members comes up to me and she goes, wow, that was amazing. I was actually able to hear the pastor speak for the first time in a long time. That's when it kind of hit me that I was using this for my own satisfaction. It was a toy to me and it really just kind of hit home for me. This was really nice, but I had totally missed the purpose of us buying it. I had totally missed the purpose of what we even said we were going to use it for. And that sounds weird because of course the government grant was supposed to help these people and, and it did. The money went towards helping these people. But my idea was it was a new toy for me to play with. It was a toy, not a tool. Check, 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 check one, check two. And see, that's kind of the problem. When I look on YouTube, all I sort of see it as is toys. You have to have the nicest things. You have to have the nicest sound boards, the best in-ear monitors, the best cameras, the best pedal board, the best microphones. If you don't have the best, what are you even doing? Now, as somebody that has good production stuff, I can tell you, yes, it's great, it's awesome, but it's not that necessary. And I think that mentality that we fall into of consumerism is far more dangerous than not having good production. Now, don't get me wrong, I still love gear reviews. So I'm not trying to throw any shade towards YouTuber that makes gear reviews and unboxing videos. They do the best of their abilities and a lot of them actually do a pretty good job. It's just, there's so much consumerism in production and especially when it comes to the church that it just gets frustrating after a while. The point of good gear is not that you get nice gear. The point of good gear is that it serves a purpose in helping the production. Like, 
My soundboard has 32 channels in it. It's great, I love it. But we're never gonna use 32 channels. That's ridiculous. We're in such a small church, we'd be lucky if we ever used 10 channels. If you have to upgrade, do what we did. First of all, fix things that are broken. In our case, our sound box, sound board, sound system, it was broken. We had to get a new board that would accompany more channels. And so fix what's broken first. The next thing you should do is fix what would have a high impact on your audience or congregation. That's fix something that the audience and congregation will actually notice. Whether your sound quality will be dramatically improved, whether it's having soft cushiony seats that people will actually be able to sit down for an hour and a half and pay attention to what's going on. Something that has a high impact on the audience Fix that first. And then finally, you can splurge on the more fancy things. The things that are fun to you, but don't have a really high reward. These are the fun things that we often dream about way too much, but in reality, we probably don't need to think about that. But we should really get away with this consumeristic attitude and bring in what do we need? Because you don't always need the latest and greatest technology. Sometimes you just need what works. And I fear that a lot of kids growing up watching this content won't actually understand that. They won't know how to properly set up lights or cameras cameras or gain stages or things like that. And instead, all they're gonna know is what's a better light than this? Is this microphone better than this one? We're not teaching about production anymore. We're teaching about the best and latest gear to buy. And what's more important than learning about gear you don't have is learning about the gear you do have. It's more important to learn how to use the gear you already have to the best of its ability so that you don't have to always ogle over getting the best equipment. You can find workarounds. You can find things that'll get the job done. In fact, I have a whole lighting and camera tutorial that teaches you how to turn any camera to look like Hollywood and to use lighting to really accent it and bring out the quality of your camera. So if you're interested in any of that, they're down in the description box below. You guys can go check that out. But the point is those techniques can be used on any piece of equipment. What I tell you in that video, any camera will work with it. Any lighting will work with that. These are techniques that we have to learn and push forward on. We don't just have to know what's the best microphone, what's the best camera, what's the best soundboard. We have to know what is good for us and is it necessary to do those upgrades? Because we'll find the time was probably don't. We have to get rid of this pro-consumerist reality because otherwise we're gonna get people that all they care about is toys and not tools. And they're gonna fall into the same trap that I did. That's it, I'm getting off my high horse. The band's coming in soon, so I have to make sure that I have everything all set up for them. Otherwise, I'd love to hear about what your churches are like, what's your experience in production down in the comment box. Don't forget to comment, like, share this video to all your friends. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you later. Oh, and uh, don't forget to check out your government website. There's probably some free money in it for you.